Hey, it's the Preacher, and today I'm going to show you how to make Tibetan chili hot sauce. And this will be a vinegar pepper based sauce. It'll be similar to a Tabasco or Louisiana uh, hot sauce, except we won't be using cayenne peppers, which is what Louisiana uses, and we won't be using Tabasco peppers, which is what Tabasco sauce is made out of. We'll be using rather fermented Tibetan chilies. And I like the Tibetan chilies better because they're a bigger pepper. And the walls are a little thicker than a cayenne and probably a little thicker than the, the much smaller Tabasco pepper. So what I've done here is I have a half gallon um, mason jar and I have a burper on here or a nipple that allows air to, or gases to come out as this um, ferments but keeps air from going back in so I, don't, I get an anaerobic environment. In other words, no oxygen. And this is what I'm doing here in these bags. If you watched the video the other day, you saw that I had vacuum sealed some peppers. And as we see, the bags are filling full of air. And yesterday, well, three or four days ago, these were just tightly vacuum sealed bags and now they're blowing up with air. And so what that tells me is that there is fermentation taking place in these airtight bags. We'll set those over here out of the way. That's the same thing we did with these. Now, the way you encourage this, this fermentation to take place is you submerge the peppers into a salt brine. And you get too much salt, you kill the um, lacto-fermentation bacteria. You don't get enough salt, you allow bad bacteria to take over. So you need to be between two and 5% sodium. And you can get online and look and see calculators of how to calculate, uh, how to mix your, your um, salt to water ratios. And I believe I used around 3% salt in this. So something I want to do, I use a glass weight to help hold those peppers down under that water so that they ferment and if they come to the top they're prone to get mold. So now what I want to do is pour off some of this salt liquid. You could just dump all of this in a blender and puree it. What happens though is because this is salt water, you can end up with a pretty salty hot sauce. So I like to pour off some of the water. This is just salt water. I, I know there's some flavor in there and some heat in there. But what I've done now is I've concentrated my peppers. So. If I need water, I've got some here to add. If I need some of my salt brine back, I've got some here to add. Let's get this in the blender. Woo! Yes, sir, that tickles the sinuses. <laughs> wow, had a little sneezing fit there. Okay, now you could eat these peppers. These would just be fermented peppers. Let me get one out here and see how hot they are. That has a really tangy heat. It's hot. I would say I would liken it to it's hotter than a than a jalapeno, but it's a different kind of heat. Kind of has what I call a bitter heat, you know, where it's not kind of like you get sometimes with a habanero. I don't think it's as hot as a habanero, but it's got a very good flavor. So I'm happy with that. We're going to blend this until we've pureed, mixed. We want to just completely and totally pulverize it. <clears throat> Some of these seeds are tough. This is a thick skinned pepper. I may not get it all to completely blend into a fine paste, but we're going to run it through a strainer and get rid of all the chunks. So let's start it up. Okay, let me bring you in close. As you can see, that has really pulverized what's in there. You're not going to get those seeds to blend up because they're very tough. 
but we've got a pretty consistent looking juice. Let's drain it. Okay, I found a container. I wanted something clear where you could kind of see what we're doing. And I'm going to pour this mixture through this sieve or strainer. All right, now I'll start pressing out some of what's here. There's still a lot of juice in this pulp. That was almost bad. Now, you, people say, are you going to throw the pulp away? Uh, yeah, I usually do. I've heard of people marinating with it. Um, it's just ground up fermented pepper peelings and seed, mainly seeds. And if you de-seed your peppers first, you won't have all the seeds con to contend with. But a lot of your heat comes from your seeds. So if you want the heat, you need to leave the seeds in there. Well, I mean, just put vinegar on it if you want a mild hot sauce. Now, depending on what kind of peppers you ferment, will depend on how much of that, the pepper flesh, or, or the, the actual, you know, meaty part of the pepper, and how long you ferment it will determine on how soft it gets and how much of it will actually go through the strainer. And this is a pretty fine mesh strainer. All right, let's get the rest of it out of there. Now, all this is is salt, water, and pepper, and garlic. So we haven't added any vinegar. Okay, there's what you end up with, a pretty consistent paste, and that's just the tough parts of the pepper flesh and mainly seeds. So we're going to go ahead and dump that in the trash. Okay, now that we have our hot sauce that has been blended to get it in smaller pieces, the process now is to add vinegar to thin that down. Now, if you don't like the taste of vinegar, you could by all means put the salt brine back in there. If that's too salty, you could add some regular water. You just have to be careful adding water because you raise your pH level up and it no longer becomes shelf stable and you have to eat it pretty quick and keep it in the fridge. Now that our vinegar's in there, we've got the right level of heat and the right level of, of tang in the vinegar. We're happy with the saltiness of it. If it needed more salt, we would add our brine. But I think it's plenty salty as is, so I'm going to get rid of the brine. So we have the right flavor for our hot sauce. Now we need to talk about uh, bottling it. We could put this in a bottle and it would be shelf stable because of its pH. But there could be a chance that we picked up some bacteria or some mold or something bad while we were blending it, while we were mixing it. And so I like to put it on the stove and bring it to a boil for a minute just to ensure that I kill anything that may be bad in there. Now some people will say, well you ruined the probiotics of fermented hot sauce. <laughs> Folks, you're not going to eat enough of this to get a probiotic benefit from it. You're going to put three or four or five shakes on a taco. If you want probiotics, eat some sauerkraut, eat some fermented uh, green beans or pickles. This is just seasoning. So we're not trying to preserve that good bacteria in here. We're trying to ensure that we didn't pick up any bad bacteria. Another thing to tell you about this is because we ran it through the strainer, we have some very fine pepper uh, molecules in here and they're going to want to settle out to the bottom. And so we'll constantly have to shake our hot sauce to keep the, uh, the, the, the vinegar and the, the uh, brine that wants to come to the top and all the sediment to go to the bottom. So to help prevent that, we're going to add xanthan gum. And there's no science to xanthan gum. There's no recipe. Uh, so much of a teaspoon to so much of a cup or a pint or a quart. Sometimes this works great. Sometimes you have to put a lot in there. I can't tell. So... Let me put this on the stove, bring it to a boil, I'll add some xanthan gum, I'll tell you about how much I put in it to thicken it up and keep it suspended, and then uh, we'll bottle. We're going to ensure that we kill anything that might have escaped or got added into the process. Alright, let's turn that down. 
and let's start blending xanthan gum. Okay, I think you can see a difference. Notice how it coats the spoon. It's more velvety looking. Uh, I don't know what's the word you're looking for, but it seems to have taken on the xanthan gum. Now, I ran a immersion blender in there and made sure the xanthan gum was fully blended. Okay, now it's time to bottle it up, and I happen to have a bunch of hot sauce bottles. These are five ounce bottles. Okay, so let's, let me show you what I ended up with. I've got two, four, six, eight full bottles. And then I filled up a little two ounce container of the leftovers. So I'll put that in the fridge and that's probably what I'll um, eat on until it's gone and then I'll switch to this bottle that I didn't seal. I'll put this in the fridge when it cools. Uh, well here, we'll just see how the shaker bottle works. We turn it up, have a little bit on a chip. It's pretty hot. It's not like kill you hot. Mmm. That's got a good flavor. It's hot. It's not real vinegary. I know you saw me dump 16 ounces of vinegar in there, but with the already salt brine and the pepper, that was not bad. You don't have to use these fancy bottles. You could put yours in a, you could keep an old ketchup bottle or something like that, or put it in a squirt bottle. Wow. So there you have it, Tibetan chili hot sauce. Tibetan hot sauce. It's much like a Tabasco sauce, not quite as vinegary, a little hotter, different flavor, different heat. I can't describe it to you. Anyways, I'll eat this one and this, and we'll probably give these away. I'm going to a fish fry next Wednesday night at a local Bible study, and I think I'll take a bottle and maybe get their opinion on what they think about the hot sauce. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. Maybe I did it right. Maybe I did it wrong. I've been making hot sauce for quite a while. And um, it's worth the effort. You ought to try fermenting your own peppers and making them. My next fermenting videos will be probably the jalapenos, the red jalapenos that I'm fermenting. And I have a jar of those right here. Or I may do vinegars. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.